All right, so we just set up the rig here. As you can see, um, the Maximus 9 Apex in combination with the GTX 1080 Strix, which you can see on here. Um, also a very nice roboter. Uh, so the first thing I want to show you is how you can set up the DIM.2 drive um, in RAID mode. So obviously the first thing you do is you enter the BIOS and then you go uh, to the boot menu and to the sub menu, which is called CSM. And there you change the boot from storage devices to UE UEFI driver first. Afterwards, you go to advanced PCH storage configuration, SATA mode selection, and you change that one to Intel RST uh, mode and enable those two. If you did that, you have to um, confirm, this, confirm the settings by pressing F10, exit the BIOS and go back to the BIOS. Otherwise, you will not find this sub menu, which is called Intel Rapid Storage Technology, Rapid Storage. Um, so you enter that one and here you can select uh, your RAID volume. I already did it here, obviously. Um, but here you can see the two Kingston drives I have. And this is the sub menu where you can set up your RAID devices. So either RAID 1, RAID 0, whatever you need. But uh, for now, we will leave that and uh, go, o go over to the overclocking. So what we will do here is overclock the CPU to 5 gigahertz, which you should be able to re reproduce. You can just copy the settings I'm entering here. Of course, also suitable for the i5-7600K. So go to AI Overclock Tuner and load the XMP profile. Select no because we don't want to do the multi-core enhancement. We don't need that because we will overclock ourselves. And now you can see because I'm using this uh, very high XMP profile of 4266, it also adjusts the BCLK frequency to 103. I will adjust this one manually to 100 now because otherwise it might confuse you later, um, well, in terms of getting the clock. So the first option uh, we have to change is the AVX instruction core ratio negative offset. This is an option you might have heard about already from Broadwell E because this option allows you to overclock higher in a normal uh, circumstance. So for normal gaming, you can clock higher because normal games don't use AVX. AVX is, in, is an instruction uh, inside the CPU, which allows the CPU to work more efficient and uh, be faster in the calculation. However, it's also putting much more load on the CPU, which in the result you can clock lower. So with the AVX instruction offset, you can uh, force the CPU to clock lower automatically uh, if it detects AVX. So we will enter a value of three, of three there, which means um, that it will clock lower by 300 megahertz in the end. So the next step, you go to one core ratio limit and enter 50 here, which results in five gigahertz. And if you take a look at the AVX instruction core ratio negative offset above, it's uh, the three and the three will be um, subtracted from the 50. Then you have 47, which is 4,700 megahertz in case of AVX. So DRAM frequency is already selected from the XMP profile, nothing to do here. Um, DRAM timing control, there is a very, very nice and uh, helpful option I want to show you. It's called the Maximus Tweak. Um, it's currently set to mode one. Actually, mode one, uh, uh, mode two is better because uh, those are different modes, how the memory um, is tuned, um, especially when it comes to the sub timings and mode two allows a little bit more uh, overclocking and stability. So uh, especially for those memory sticks, if you run something around 4,000 4, megahertz or above, you should always set this to mode 2. It helps it uh, to boot easier. So now go to external DG Plus power control and set the CPU load line calibration to level 5. This will help the CPU to keep uh, the voltage stable under load because usually if you would um, use a voltage of, for example, 1.25 volt, and uh, you push it under load, like Prime95, it will result in 1.20 volts. So you have a drop of 50 millivolts. And you can compensate that voltage drop with the load line calibration. So level, le level 5 should be uh, fine. And the next option you have to change is the CPU core cache current limit max. Uh, just type anything here, it will result in 255.5 amps. And of course, your CPU will, will not pull 255 amps, but um, this option will make sure that there is no power limit and your CPU will always be stable at the maximum clock. Then you have minimum and maximum uh, CPU cache ratio. The cache is a small um, part inside the CPU 
And um, well, the cache is uh, similar to the memory. It's a storage, small, small storage inside the CPU. And the higher you clock, uh, the faster the CPU can perform. The performance gain um, compared to the normal cache at uh, the normal core clock is a little bit lower, but still. Um, I would advise that you increase the clock here. So go from 41 to 43, which should work on all the chips. Um, uh, the next step is to adjust uh, the CPU core and cache voltage. Set this one to manual and adjust it to 1.3 volts. The maximum um, I would advise is, in ar uh, is around 1.4 volt, which is still fine. Of course, make sure that you have a very good cooling solution in case you use 1.4 volt. And also consider to delete your chip and swap the terminal paste, which I actually always recommend. You can see the DRAM voltage is adjusted to 1.4 volt, which is kind of much considering an XMP profile. It's actually the first XMP profile I've seen with 1.4 volt. It's still fine for 24-7 computing. Um, for your XMP profile, it might only be 1.2 or maybe 1.35 volt. Two more options you have here is uh, CPU VCCIO and uh, system agent voltage. Um, those help you for memory overclocking. So if you have a memory um, module let's say 3,600 megahertz and above, you probably have to set them manually. And um, good values are 1.2 for VCCIO and 1.225 for system agent. And those values also work very well if you're using 4,133 megahertz. Yeah, that's it for now. Um, that's actually all you have to change in the BIOS to clock to 5 gigahertz. The only thing left you can do if you want to is you go to Tool, go to the ASUS Overclocking Profile and save your profile. Um, enter the profile name here and then save. Hit F10 to save the, uh, save the settings and go to Windows. All right, so we just entered Windows and the first thing we will do is test um, the DIM.2 drive. So I got AS SSD benchmark here, which is uh, a nice benchmark to test quickly how fast your SSD uh, can, can perform. So usually you just open the benchmark and press start and then you can get an idea of how, how the um, sequential read and write values are. Um, of course, they differ every time a little bit. When I did the German version, it was around 2,800 megabyte per second in read and 1,200 megabyte in write. Now it's a little bit lower, uh, 2,700 and close to 1,200. Um, still a very nice performance considering uh, what you pay because usually those values you can only get with very expensive uh, PCI Express SSDs which cost like 4,500, uh, maybe 5,000 euro. So yeah, of course if you um, attach some um, stronger, even stronger NVMe drives like a Samsung 950 Pro or 960, uh, you can get even higher values probably like 4,000 megabyte per second, maybe 5,000 megabyte per second are even possible. Depends obviously on what your budget is and what, you, what you're looking for. But even this solution with those cheaper SSDs is really nice and really fast as you can see in the benchmark. So the next uh, thing we will do is test the system for stability. So open core temp um, because you always have to t keep track on your temperatures. And uh, KB Lake is very similar to Skylake you could always call it uh, Skylake Refresh. So um, you would always try to stay below 85 degrees Celsius because that's kind of for this architecture a point where the CPUs tend to be unstable. Usually if you have a strong cooling solution and also deleted your, your chip, it's not a problem and you will stay automatically away from those values. So now open CPU-Z uh, to take a look at your system details and also make sure that you have everything correct. Um, by the way, if you have fluctuations in uh, the core speed, so it could be if you didn't change anything into your OS that you have only 800 megahertz here, maybe 1000 megahertz, that's because of the Intel speed step options. And if you don't want to have that, if you want to have the maximum clock all the time, full speed, then you just go to the power options of your Windows, uh, go choose power plan and then ch select highest performance and you will always have the five gigahertz. Also on a quick note, you can see the core voltage is currently 2.656 volt, which is obviously a measurement uh, or readout mistake by CPU-Z because this is an early version, which is not even meant for Cappy Lake, so it's kind of a readout error. But I checked with the uh, multimeter and 1.3 uh, volt, which we set in the BIOS, are all also on the CPU. So it's actually reading double what we set. 
anyway, uh, CPU-C, you can get all the information from your system. So you can, uh, if you go to mainboard, you can check and see that, well, we are running the Maximus uh, 9, 9 Apex, currently with the BIOS version 0204. Obviously, later, um, when this board uh, will be available, it's, yeah, it should be that there should be a new BIOS version out there. And before you OC, make sure you go to the um, ASUS homepage, get the la latest BIOS version, and then start with the overclocking. Go to memory uh, to check your memory settings. You can see I'm running the 16 gigabyte DDR4 in dual channel. And what you can see here, the 4,300 megahertz, that's the cache clock, um, what we uh, set earlier in the BIOS. And if you check the DRAM frequency here, you can see we successfully run uh, the 4,133 megahertz on the memories. You can only see 2,066 megahertz here because it's DDR memory, which means double data rate. So actually it's only half effective rate. That's why you can only see half here. All right, so um, to, to test the system stability, you need Prime95 which is a very useful and nice tool for that. And first of all, I want to show you um, how the AVX negative ratio works. So you can see we have 5000 megahertz here in the CPU-Z. And now I open Prime95 version 27.9, which is with AVX. So I open this, set it to custom, op uh, enter minimum and maximum FFT size of 1344. And now make sure you keep your eyes on the core speed. If I press OK, you can see the core speed is uh, clocking down to 4.7 uh, gigahertz. And that's the negative ratio offset, which you can do uh, with Kaby Lake compared to Sky Lake. And this is a very useful feature because that helps you to, to overclock much higher than you can usually do. So let's close this Prime95 version and use the one uh, we will use for the long-term testing. So make sure you get Prime95 version 26.6 because this version has no AVX and therefore you can test the CPU at the maximum clock, which is what we want. So again, choose custom and a mini minimum and maximum FFT size of 1344. Check run FFTs in place, hit OK. And now you can also see the temperature is increasing quite drastically. Um, still it's fine, even though I'm using a quite small cooler, which you can see here. Well, we will take some close-ups so you can see it better. Um, but even with this small cooler, you're able to clock Kaby Lake to 5 gigahertz, which is, from my point of view, really impressive. So you can see the temperature is now getting closer to 80 degrees. As I said before, just make sure you stay below 85. 90 is still okay, but it might be that you're running uh, into stability issues then. Um, keep this test running for at least one hour. Uh, if it's running too hot, consider lowering the vCore if you can do it. Um, if it's crashing or uh, if you get errors in Prime95, you should increase the V-Core, the core voltage in the BIOS. Um, the next step would be 1.325. Make sure you keep your um, eyes on the temperature to make sure you stay below 85 degrees. And after one hour, it should be fine and you can uh, just play some games. Uh, should be ready to go. If you have any trouble uh, with some settings, if you have any questions about a main board, just put them in the comments. Of course, I will help you guys. Uh, otherwise, I hope you enjoyed this video and the useful information I gave you with this overclocking guide. Stay tuned. See you soon.